Coming back, though, to the McLean's article, as he's been sitting very patiently as we've been talking about his own writing uh, in Ottawa, Paul Wells, the senior writer with McLean's. Thank you for being here, Paul, and to talk about your big exclusive today, and it's an important one. Good morning. Good morning. You heard Janice. She picked out some of the headlines, and I want to get to some of the points as I've read them too. But can you just give me a little bit of a sense of Jane Philpott's sort of approach to this inter interview? I mean, did you get the sense that she was bursting to get her story out to you? Because in the introduction, it says deeply ambivalent. Yeah. She, she, so like every reporter in Ottawa, I had, I had directly contacted Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott uh, immediately after each departed from Cabinet and said, uh, you know, we should talk. And, and, and this was the first time almost two weeks later that Jane Philpott was willing to talk. She was still very reticent. Uh, she was nervous. Uh, during the period when she talked about how angry her caucus colleagues at her, are at her, she was deeply emotional. Uh, it was it was plainly difficult for her to talk about that. Um, but she's kind of stuck with her conception of her obligation uh, to the administration of justice and to the oaths that she took when she became a cabinet minister, and uh, and 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 she doesn't see how she can remain silent. And and so she uh, she kind of granted this interview despite herself, I had the impression. I think that it's a great way of putting it because, I mean, the, one of the headlines is there's more to the story, much more to the story that needs to be told, and yet she doesn't go to the point of telling the whole story yet, still does she? No, she's, she's taking legal advice, I don't know who from, uh, to the effect that she cannot unless, uh, unless uh, questions of privilege are waived. Um, because these are cabinet confidences, these are government confidences. And uh, she's not even sure that as a member of uh, the House of Commons that she could simply stand up in the House of Commons and, and give her version. She's not sure that parliamentary privilege trumps all the other kinds of privilege uh, that, that, that this is cloaked in. She says that, that uh, to find out what happens, this, the government, the prime minister, needs to have a change of heart about how to approach this story. And that the... Uh, the moves that the Prime Minister announced at the beginning of the week, changing the clerk of the Privy Council, bringing in Anne McClellan, the former Deputy Prime Minister, to look at the, uh, the, the uh, organizational chart of, of, around justice issues, uh, and, frankly, shutting down the Parliamentary Committee investigation, she says that's not enough. She says she doesn't believe the Ethics Commissioner uh, will be able, uh, uh, with the powers that he has at his disposal, to, 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 to find out what, what, what needs to be found out. Mm -hmm. And so in the meantime, she's not going to go quietly, plainly. And yet she, she feels, and she told you, that she believes Canadians do want to know the whole truth. Does she have a sense that the truth will all eventually be out in the public domain, Paul? Uh, I, got, I got no conclusive answer on that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I kept saying, you know, sketch out for me a future in which the, the stories that you believe need telling are told. What does that look like? And I didn't get a clear answer. I'm not sure she knows. Okay. Explore with me uh, the, that question of motive. Janice raised it. You know, the whole idea, she was very clear when she resigned. Her constitutional obligation as a cabinet minister, she could not fulfill that. She did not have confidence in the government in the way it was handling SNC-Lavalin. But it, she makes it clear to you it's, it's not a power play. Well, it, did, talk a little bit more about why she resigned. Yeah, I mean, um, some people are saying, I mean, people whose political acumen I respect are saying that this is a way to position either Jody Wilson-Raybould or Jane Philpott uh, is, is positioning herself for some future run to the, the top of the Liberal Party. Um, Philpott was careful at every turn to defer to Jody Wilson-Raybould to speak for herself. And Jody Wilson-Raybould hasn't answered my interview requests yet. Uh, but as for her, Jane Philpott, uh, not only did she deny uh, any ambitions for the leadership of the federal or the Ontario Liberal Party, I got the distinct impression that she honestly does not believe her political star is rising in this town. Mm -hmm. She is keenly aware of how upset her colleagues are at her, and, uh, and frankly, most Liberals. Because of what she may have done to re-election chances? Uh, yes, uh, apparently some of her colleagues have told her that in so many words. They have said to her, I'm, I'm going to lose my seat because of you. That must be difficult uh, to hear. Uh, this, this has been an unusually close-knit cabinet and caucus. Uh, they do team building exercises when they go off on their retreats, like um, uh, it's like summer camp. They, they, do, they, they, they have gone through exercises that are, that are designed 
to increase their uh, personal uh, bond and sense of, uh, of, of of teamwork together. And to step outside that and to be told by the members of your political family that you are hurting its electoral chances must not be pleasant. No. Um more of her story to tell. She makes it clear that Jody Wilson-Raybould has more to tell, too. Let me ask you two quick questions um, before I have to let you go. Number one, in terms of impact, just the fact that she has spoken to you publicly may cause further fracture within the party. I guess we'll see on that. But we're already seeing it on the House. You, you heard Janice talking about how Pierre Poilievre immediately brought up your article there as they go through these motions and votes. Um, likely, perhaps, uh, not likely, perhaps, perhaps going to give additional fire to the opposition as they continue to try to keep this in the public eye, the story? Already this morning, more than a dozen Conservative MPs are sharing the story that we published on their personal Facebook pages. Uh, the Conservatives seem to think this helps them. We will see whether any Liberals agree with Jane Philpott uh, about her diagnosis and what she says needs to be done. And your last thoughts, I guess, on where you think based on listening to her thoroughly, um, where she is, her assessment, as she was able to tell you to the extent she was able to tell you, what do you think that this interview, how, how does it inform our understanding of this story? Um, I, I've seen some commentary to the effect that there's still a big mystery around. As a matter of fact, Janice, when you talked to her, uh, said that, that Philpott doesn't actually reveal much more about the... Um, the central question, which was, was there pressure on the attorney general? Um, she she says there's more to be revealed, but she's careful not to reveal it. So uh, it's still a big question mark. But Jane Philpott had uh, an unusual level of credibility uh, as a cabinet minister in this government, and she's thrown that out the window, and she won't stop talking about what uh, about a, about this big problem. That ensures that it will continue to be a big problem for the prime minister and for the liberals for some time to come. Paul Wells from Ottawa, the uh, journalist, commentator who got that exclusive interview with Jane Philpott. It is published now in Maclean's. I thank you, Paul, for the time this morning, as always. Thank you.